Test, test, test. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Uh, bang. All right, folks, uh, give me a little second here to get myself acclimated. Been doing a little, I guess you call it spring cleaning. Uh, all right, folks, uh, give me a little second here to get myself Okay, who is in the room? I guess you call it spring cleaning. Location uh, and right, test. Uh, Type. Who's in the room? Location and test type. We're here for the AFOQT, the SIF, the ASTBE, the OAR. Did I say AFOQT? If I didn't, that as well. Um, I see. I see two in the room. Checking my email. AFOQT, the SIF, Email questions. The OAR. Did I say AFOQT? If I didn't, that as well. Two. I see two in the room. Checking my email. Uh, email questions. Okay, we got Layla from Colton, California. Catherine from Tallahassee, Florida. Catherine, I, I don't know what's up with this uh, with your email. You can post it here, and I could uh, lock it in. And um, you know, we can. Uh, I guess we can contact each other like that, or you can call me at you can post it here. the number I am posting on the timeline. Nine zero eight three one five four zero six six. Okay. So. Yeah, I look a little rough. I've been cleaning. I don't go back on duty till tomorrow. So. It's okay. It is what it is. Um. Okay. If you have. A smartphone. You can actually take pictures with your smartphone of the particular question that you have, and uh, I will answer it. We're here till 10 o'clock. After 10 o'clock, 10 to 11, I will be doing a, uh, a, a uh, Google chat. Or, you know what, Catherine? Text your email to my phone. Phone number's right there on the message board. So, if you go ahead and do that, um, We'll do. I have Google several. Chat. You have several or, what? You know what, Catherine? Text email? your email okay. to my phone. Um, phone number's right there okay. on the message board. Um, so, all right. So what am I doing now? I am checking um, my email. We'll do. I have several. You to have see several if what? you've uh, sent some wonderfully email. tough questions to me. And uh, the um, best and most effective way to use this, I'm here every Friday night, 9 to 11. 9 to 10, I do a live stream. At 10 to 11, I do a Google chat, Eastern Standard Time. So basically what you do, if you have the ASMAR test prep book, the SIFT test book, the ASTBE, the AFOQT, Federal Aviation Administration guys too, from private, private pilot all the way up to airline transport pilot, and that includes initial flight instructors, instrument flight instructors. This is a forum or a place where you can come and, you know, if you have questions, um, you can, uh, you can, uh, go ahead and, uh, okay, I got you, Catherine. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and also, if you could text the email in there, too, as well. Um, when you get time, I have your number. That's cool. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, where am I going? I'm going to my. Um, and also, if you could text the email, email in the subject, well. just put live stream. Um, when you get time, I have your number. And okay. Okay, Let's so uh, yeah, where am I going? I'm going to my. Um, and also, if you could text the email, email in the subject, well. just put okay. live stream. Okay. Okay. Questions. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Well, good. Get to uh, snapping photos and sending them, and uh, we will address those. Now I am uh, at this point. I'm sending out emails. I do not see anything in the inbox. What I will do is ask the people that are here in the room what type of questions are you having problems with, and then uh, maybe for starters, that could be a jump-off point to just kind of jump in and uh, get started. You guys get a free hour, a free hour of live stream, another free hour of. Uh, Google chat where you can speak with me directly and um, you know okay uh, Catherine alright you know what happened <laughs> your your email I see your email your email was not there wasn't a, there wasn't a Catherine in there so that's why alright I've seen okay so I do have your email no worries okay uh, just figured that out Moving right along through the email. Okay, what kind of questions are we having problems with? When we go through our test prep booklets, what kind of questions are we having problems with? That is the question. Okay, so don't be shy. Don't be shy. Every Friday night, 9 p.m. to 11, you got me for free. I do offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring, which I charge for, but um, right now. Okay, setting a mechanical problem now. As we have questions like mechanical comprehension and electrical information and auto shop. Okay. I sound like Kevin Hart. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now, I prefer you guys send this to the email, but uh, let's see here. Okay, we have our first question, though. All right. But I prefer you send photos to the email because I just, you know, just gets a little much looking at, you know, I, I got screens and, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm here to help. Okay, so basically what we have is, let me get this right, on system A, well, that's one that's one revolution, point A, okay, they're not asking about system B. Okay, so here's the question. What we have is we have a big wheel and we have a smaller wheel. All right, don't make fun of my artwork sensitive. All right, so we have a big wheel and we have a smaller wheel. And this big wheel is labeled X1. The smaller wheel is labeled Y1. And this is system A. All right, there's also system B, but the question is not asking about system B. Um, we have A here and we have B here and we have a belt. 
that is going around through the wheel. So the belt is it's going like this. And that. Okay, figure eight. So in system A, wheel X1, that would be this wheel, makes one revolution. And they're asking about point A. So this point A, and this is point B. So point A and point B. All right, so our options. All right, so this guy makes one revolution. And the question, the answers are point A travels a greater distance than point B. So A travels a greater distance than B. A travels a smaller distance than B. And then A say equal A travels an equal distance than B. So as this thing rotates, as this wheel rotates, all right, this belt is going to move. A is going to rotate clockwise. B is going to rotate counterclockwise. All right. Let's see some other things that we can uh, determine here. Mm. I believe that if A makes one revolution, a is going to travel a greater distance than B because the circumference, which is which is the distance around this circle, if this thing does one whole revolution, all right, the circumference is going to uh, be greater. This is a smaller circumference. So the actual distance and radians Radians will be a way we could measure that, or degrees actually as well. Um, a is going to actually move, so I would go with the A. All right. All righty. Okay, the question is where does the distance travel by point A and point B around the circle, which is why I said greater. Really now. Well, the only way to really, truly, like, determine that, and that is a tough one, but I think it is with respect to the belt, not the circle. Okay, another thing, Catherine, you have to understand that a lot of these books, they do have typos as well, but it would have been kind of better if we had some, like, a radius to work with. All right. Then I could actually work out a circumference and stuff, but, hey. Okay. And, Catherine, what test are you taking again? Why well, one turns faster. Answer it to be a move at the same time. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Okay, 
Kari has uh, put in a question. All right, and if you like the, if you like the stream, please uh, like the video, please. All right, in two weeks. All right. ASTBE in two weeks. Is this your first time, Catherine, taking this test? It's been up two days for the second time today, and I proved my score by watching your videos. Glad to hear that. Uh, what was your first score? Pride Davis, Mr. Pride Davis, what was your first score and what was your second score? And Catherine. Uh, okay, in the meantime, we'll deal with Kari's questions. And also, guys, if you want to be included in the Google chat, um, I take that as well for six days and haven't studied. Mystic Art, that is not good. I take the ASVAB in six days and have it studied. Unless you're like in school and working with different types of uh, problems in a week. But the good thing about the ASVAB is you can take it. Um, you can take it uh, multiple times. They don't have uh, maximum uh, attempts like they do in um, the SIFT at the SIFT ASTB -E OAR and AFOQT. So, uh, okay, five, six, five, forty-seven, five, six, five, three, four, four. Linear triple numbers went down. Um, system A. Kari says the answer is more. She agrees with me. And, um, then one re revolution. Okay. All right. Um, and Kari, like I was telling her, a lot, in a lot of cases, there are some typos in these books. A lot of them. Um, but, uh, all right. Let's deal with your question. All right. Mathematics. Okay. If x minus y squared equals 60 and x squared plus y squared equals 40 then x times y is what? Okay, x minus y squared equals 60, which means if we FOIL this, x minus y times x minus y. Is equal to 60 first, x squared, opposite minus x y inside minus x y minus x y x squared minus two x y equals I didn't even see that. All right, folks, give me a sec. Can't really see the green marker too light. Okay. Okay, why do you get negative 10? Share with the room, Catherine. That's the answer. Kari or Catherine, explain.
but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> it's negative 10, but I don't know how to do it. Come on. Okay. You can't do that when you take your OAR. So what would make you think it was negative 10? Squared plus y squared equals 40. That is like the uh, Pythagorean theorem, actually. Full the x minus y squared first. The funny car, yeah, I saw that. I'll get you later. <laughs> All right, and then what, you, what did you do? The result is 2y and then y squared which I was um, 2xy plus y squared, which is what I was about to do. All right, the result is, is 60. Then plug x squared plus 2y squared and a 40 into that. All right, okay, your next move. x squared plus 40 equals 60. Okay, so 40 goes across. All right, negative 2xy plus 40 equals 60. So negative 2xy is going to be equal to 20. And then solve for xy. Well, 5 and 2 would be factors that you could probably work with. 5 and 2 being 10. So xy. So after we boil down to the xy, which we could say, five, which is 5 and 2, because negative 2, well, one of them would have to be negative, wouldn't it? Because... Uh, xy equals 20. So one of them would have to be negative. Because I'm just, yeah. And that, and that would make sense to make it negative 10 if we multiply x plus y. So 4. The only problem that I'm having when I try to attempt to use uh, the xy, negative 5, and 2, that statement doesn't add up. Okay, well, it's, it only wants the term xy and not separately. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, so did everybody get that? Just right, clear, if you got it. Six in the room, including myself. All right, I still don't get it. All right, what, we'll, what we will do in the interest of time we will talk about this in the Google chat. Keep those questions coming. So, uh, that'll be the number one thing we talk about in the, uh, that card, just make sure you read the problem carefully, work it out step by step. Lay Love is smiling. All right. Mm -hmm.
Okay, 928. We're almost 30 minutes into this. Let's get some questions in there. All right, we have two weights. We have a 10 pound weight and we have a five pound weight hanging from a longer distance. The question is asking which weight exerts less pull on the horizontal ball bar from which it weigh, weights which the weights hang by strings is A exerting less pull is B exerting less pull um, and then or C each weight exerts the same pull on the bar I would throw that out immediately um, okay so this is the horizontal bar and both of these objects are being pulled all right distance is really not a factor here. All right. What is a factor is force equals mass times acceleration. So the question is asking uh, which exerts less pull or less force on a horizontal bar from which the weight hang weights hang by strings. All right. So force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, the force would be in newtons. The mass here would be normally we use kilograms, uh, but even if we translate it pounds to kilograms, this would be one half of that. So we'll just say kilograms, just for just just to plug something in. And gravity exerts itself at 9.8 meters per second squared. So even if you came here and you did this one, um, in Newton's five kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, don't get caught up in the kilograms and pounds. This is half the weight of this. So as gravitational pull exerts itself on the two objects that are pulling the strings. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with uh, A. Oh, no, 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 no. A, yeah, A. I'm going to go with A on this one. Because gravitational pull is exerting less force. Don't get caught up in the pounds. This weight is double this weight. So gravitational pull multiplied by the weight is going to exert less here and more than here, no matter what the distance is. Does that make sense? And if that makes sense, everybody, just... Uh, Okay, it's A, thank you. Everybody, if everybody got that, just type in clear for me, please. Wait, so the weight doesn't matter? Yes, the weight does matter. I'm just saying the units don't matter. All you need to understand is that this is half of this. So whether we said pounds, kilograms, milligrams, doesn't matter. Gravitational pull is still going to act on the object regardless of the weight. And if force equals mass times acceleration, 
in both cases, gravity, 9.8 meters per second, is going to, uh, and this was 10, sorry, 1, 0. This was 10. So if we multiply this times this, it's going to be double what this is, which means more force is exerted in this. So the question is asking which weight exerts less pull on the horizontal bar from which the weights hang by strings. Clear now. Thank you. Also. All right. Osvaldo. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Totally forgot about force equals mass times acceleration. That's okay. That's why we come here to remind ourselves and just develop a little bit of a synergy because Kari may be looking at something, a question a certain way that Catherine isn't. Or Osvaldo may be looking at a question that uh, Mr. Pride is not looking at it. So everybody, we're looking at these questions from two, a couple different perspectives. And the cool thing about that, or more than one perspective, um, and so, um, let's see here. All right. Okay, this is a question, another question, um, and we will bring this up again, and uh, hey, email it to me too, Catherine, don't leave me out. <laughs> All right, what type of wood would be used in framing a house? We'll get to that in a second. Um, all right. So, in our next question, we have a submarine, a submarine, and we're just going to, it's under the assumption, I guess, that it is moving forward. So, it's the top view of a submarine, and it kind of looks like this, don't laugh at my artwork, and We have the elevator, and then we have rudder. We have two rudder positions, so it could be rudder position left or rudder position right. All right. So they give us two options. A submarine is traveling through the ocean when its outer hull cracks and air pushes out of its lower right side. Now, this picture is kind of looking like the middle. So the outer hull of this thing cracks. Right. and air starts to push out. So we have a force going this way, and we use vectors to label force. So we have a force traveling that way, and that is the movement of the submarine. But all of a sudden, um, and normally if the fin was stabilized, like normal, going in a straight path, all right, what would happen is the rudder would stay straight. We don't need to move it to position A or position B. And now what we have is a situation where we have an imbalance. Air is pushing out, and it is actually going to provide a vector going this way. All right. Because the air is pushing out. So just think of me of pushing away from this wall air is, is pushing out and it's actually going to move the rear end of this uh, submarine to the left. So the rudder must be deflected to the left in order to counteract that. Submarine is traveling through the ocean when its outer hold cracks and air pushes out of its lower right side, in which direction must the rudder must be turned to ensure the submarine remains on its heading. So we want to stay on a straight heading. We have a vector going this way, and the rudder pushing this way will counteract that vector and balance out the situation. All right. If that makes sense, everybody, just type in clear.
Okay, Catherine says A is right. And submarines move through water the same way that um, the same way that uh, airplanes are very similar to the way that airplanes move through the air. So, uh, you know, once you know how to label the forces, and uh, thank you for that explanation. Okay, you foiled. You see that? Got that. That is 40. Okay, because that was a statement that they made. So 2xy, negative 2xy. Hmm. All right, we'll look at that more in depth. Okay, come on, get these questions up. Get these questions up. Okay, so turning the rudder to the left will turn the sub to the right. No, deflecting the rudder to the to the um, left will make the nose of the submarine correct left. Because if this force pushes the tail this way, we have to understand there is a center of gravity that this submarine is pivoting around. This is the symbol for the center of gravity. This means that the weight would be centrally located at this point. So it's kind of like a seesaw or a fulcrum. All right. If I apply force here, this will go back and the nose will go that way. All right. So when this force is created, it's going to tilt that way. So the submarine is no longer pointing straight when the air starts escaping out of the hull. Oh, hull. All right. So if it pivots this way, the nose of the submarine is going to be to the right of the course. In order to get it back, this must deflect into the slipstream because you have to understand there's water flowing around the submarine. And when this rudder catches it, bam, it's going to apply it's going to deflect off the rudder, and it's going to push the tail of the submarine back. All right, airplanes do the same thing. Airplane rudders do the same thing. All right. Um, hello, I want to know what's the best word knowledge paragraph and paragraph comprehension. I've been studying and learning a bunch of words. That is very good, Eric. And welcome to the room, Eric. I don't think I've ever seen your uh, your your name or your tag in the room before. So welcome. Um, there is a website called vocabulary.com. Vocabulary.com has a lot of word games and things of that nature. Um, in addition to that, uh, verbal analogies are very, very, uh, it's something you're going to see on, on, on word knowledge or uh, word knowledge tests in the ASVAB. Um, and it's going to be a part of the reading comprehension uh, part of other tests. So it's not going away. Um, trying to think. Vocabulary.com. I suggest you guys all go to vocabulary.com. I don't know. I don't really have that great of a... I don't know. Um, word knowledge... Is, 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 I got to be honest with you, it's something that is built over years. Um, I learned a word when I was 12 years old called endoplasmic reticulum. That's like the longest word I know. Endoplasmic reticulum, and it's related to cell, cell structure. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know, my parents were always kind of, you know, my, my, my mother was a school teacher, so, you know, she was always actively just, ah, ah, read, 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 read. Oh, we had a dictionary on the, on, on the bright dinner table. So, um, the only thing I can tell you about vocabulary is vocabulary is something that's built on, built over time. Um, it, with most cases, math is kind of like, uh, it's a functional thing. Word knowledge is just kind of, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, how should I say it? It's just something you build up over time. You know, that's that, that's like as clear as I can put it. 
vocabulary.com. You know, um, let me type that. Um, Okay. Um, so, all right, for people know in the room, when I was graduating from high school, I, I took, like, every test over the course of, like, a year, year and a half, because I, I got my private pilot certificate at a very young age, and I knew I wanted to be a pilot, but I didn't know where I was going, what I was going to do, but... The thing was, um, I took every test, you know, um, and I tell people, you know, don't just be like, oh, I want to join the Navy. You know, you might, I don't know, the Air Force might be your path. You don't, you don't know what the uh, universe holds for you. So, I mean, um, in my opinion, I think the OAR and the ASTBE is the hardest. It's, it's the hardest, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, the thing of it is, is like, I took every test. I've taken it. Well, it was the AFAS test, even for the army, the helicopter pilot thing. And, um, you know, my dad was just basically like, no, you're gonna, you're gonna be an officer if you're gonna, you know, do this. But the United States army has a program that they, they used to call it from high school to flight school where you could become a warrant officer because you have in the rank and insignia structure, you have the enlisted officer, you have the warrant, warrant officer in the middle, and then the commission officers. The enlisted people, which uh, most, of, well, most of you taking the um, AS ASVAB will, uh, new subs to aviation, got to pass the AT, ASTB now. Okay, cool. All right, so back to rank and insignia, you have your enlisted, which are your airmen, airmen first class, sergeants, uh, private. Um, you know, that's what you'll find in the rank and structure, and that's E, E1, E2, E3, E4. Um, and then you have your warrant officer grades, which are warrant one through four, and that'd be warrant officer. And then you have your commission officers, which are your ensigns, or second lieutenants, um, captains, majors, generals, colonels, admirals. Um, so, um, so why was I going there? Something triggered me to even think about that. Okay, high school, flight school, that's what it was. So I wound up taking all of them, and I just kind of just selected something at the end. Um, I did pretty decent on all of them. Um, I don't know. I didn't know then what I know now. And at being a tutor, tutoring for these tests, um, I've learned a lot along the way. Um, okay, 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 okay. And let's see here. Okay, the question you just sent me now, I'm actually doing research on this question right now, as, uh, you know, as we speak. Um, because I've seen this question before. This question, this is not the first time. No, there's just, uh, they're just, they're just different versions. Like, if you got the T version, I couldn't look over at your test responses and, and um and if you're taking the S version and and uh and uh give you the same responses. Um, but hold on, let me just uh, dig in a little bit here. Twelve minutes. Let's get some more questions. And I'm doing research on this Wada Clay question that I just received. Wow. You're like uh, Kari. Kari sends those fire questions, man. All right. So we have 12 minutes. 12 minutes to the Google Google chat. If you would like, if you would like to be included in the Google chat, you need to email me in the subject Google chat. 
and just say uh, Google Chat request so I can get everybody in there and uh, hopefully the encoders acting correctly today um, Boop, 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 boop. I'm just looking something up here. Copy. And I will post this on the paste. Here's the Form T example. This is an example of a Form T. If you guys are interested, it is on the message board. It's a tough one. Catherine, what is tough? Have you taken the FOQT? I don't, I'm not sure if you're talking about the same subject. Okay. Yeah, because it deals with momentum, and it deals with pendulum, pendulum motion, and um, you're like the second person that um, has ever sent that question, and that was very recently that the first person sent it. I'm still kind of doing some research on it because I just don't want to give you guys bad information. I was working out the question now it has something to do with kinetic energy and potential energy. Okay, uh, okay. Let's take a look again. And Kari, you can look at that as well. Actually, I'll bring this up in the in the live stream as well. Five kilogram watt of clay is that the end of strain thirty horizontally is embedded into the kit into the clay and causes the clay ball to rise the height of velocity. Hmm. That could be now that I'm looking at that. Because I've been working with a lot of momentum and velocity. But we we will we'll explore that in the uh and Kari, I definitely want your input on this as well. Because we've been working with momentum. And um this way, I can screen share. On the live stream, I don't know how to I don't know how to uh, screen share, uh, but I can definitely do it on the Google Chat. I definitely know how to do it on the Google Chat. So um, that is a cool question, and uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
six minutes. Any questions for the last six minutes? Okay, also, uh, I don't know. Okay, Catherine and Kari, <laughs> y'all, ooh, y'all, uh, you guys are, uh, you guys should do really, really well. I can just tell by the type of questions that you guys answered, ask, and um, just kind of like the way you guys are mentally kind of structured. Okay, uh, if you, it looks like, uh, okay, I got a and answer 8.3808. Okay. We can talk about that. Catherine, I hope you are coming to the Google chat. I don't see a request from you. Again, if you guys want to come to the Google chat, I will type my email in again. K-I-E-N-O-T-H-O-M-A-S at gmail.com And, um, yeah, definitely, definitely. I definitely want to um, see you there. Um, you've been studying hard. So is Kari. Kari, she is a beast, man. Woof! She freaking, she goes hard. She she really goes hard, man. I just like her progress since I've been working with her has been really, really good and um, amazing. Um, and not, to, not, not that you get the big head, I'm just saying. You come, you've really, really gone hard, but she puts in the work. And that's what a lot of people, they think they're just going to walk in and waltz in this test and bing, I'm going to get a 50 or 50 plus on the uh, ASTBE or the OAR. And I'm telling you, you are going to have to have a structured knowledge about physics. Um, just so you mess up where yeah, Google Hangouts is how I do it. You know, you you just you just can't walk in and you think you're gonna take this test and um, you think you're gonna be flying somebody's eighty million dollar jet, man. I'm telling you, your math is gonna have to be on point. Your 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 science, your math and science skills are gonna have to be on point. This is not just something you know. You're gonna be a military officer flying a multi million dollar jet or helicopter or it's operating some kind of equipment or leading troops. You know what I'm saying? So don't think like, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to come in, I'm going to take this test, and I'm going to kick butt, and I'm going to move forward. No, you have to put in work. And then after that, you got to go to OCS or to your officer training program. You know what I'm saying? So mentally, you are going to have to really, really uh, put in some work. And, you know, when I tutor with some people, it's just like, okay, they're like, uh, you know, as, a, as the other people, I'll give them little assignments on the side. Okay, you need to do this, this, and this. And I don't even question it because I could see it in your results when I work with you again. You know, if I say, okay, work on your system of equations, you know, and here's a worksheet. And, you know, I'm not going to ask about that worksheet, you know, because you're paying me. I'm like, hey, if it takes much, much longer, you're not valuing your time and your money. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I know we're at different levels in life, and sometimes we don't have things figured out all the way. But you're gonna have to go hard if you if you're gonna you're gonna want to kick this test in the butt. Either one, the SIFT, ASTB, or the AFOQT, or the OAR. I mean, the ASVAB. You know, you have general science, arithmetic reasoning, word knowledge, paragraph comprehension. Math knowledge, electrical information, auto and shop information, and mechanical comprehension. 
So, I mean, there's a wider range. It doesn't go as deep, but there is a wider range of topics that you're going to have to, you know, cover. So, you know, it's like, how do you want to um, handle that? You know, it's like, you know, you can take it light if you like, but, uh, you know, it just amazes me. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Potential energy formula. Okay. See? Catherine's like on point. What the hell? Look at this. All right. Energy emotion. Emotion has a very high. 8.08. Okay. So it's 959, guys. Um, again, uh, you will you should be able to join in on the Google chat if you see it, but um, I'd rather get an email from you guys to make sure you definitely get there so I can send you the link. Um, even after the Google chat gets started, you can still send me... Um, you can still send me... An email and I'll just K I E N O T H O M A S, my first and last name at gmail.com. So even if after this gets started, you know, you still want to join in or you watch the video, you're getting to the end of the video and you want to join in the live chat, the live chat, live, the, li the Google Hangout is going to be going on for, for an hour from 10 to 11. Uh, so I hope to see you guys all there. I'm about to switch. Now, it might take me five or ten minutes to get this thing going because, um, you know, so don't think like, oh, 10 or 1, I don't see it. <laughs> Give me five, ten minutes to get this thing up. It'll probably be sooner. But, you know, if I run into some type of complications that I need to address, then, you know, it is what it is. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming again. I am here every Friday, 9-11. Last Friday was Cinco de Mayo, but my laptop went down, and uh, that was a very uh, <laughs> interesting situation because I got a loaner laptop in the meantime, and then all the functions that I use were not on this laptop, so it was just very, it was really bad. But at any rate, I got it fixed, and it's looking shiny and new, and um, I will see you guys in the Google Hangout. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Um, again, 9-11, bring your test prep booklets, your pens, pencils, and scrap paper so you can get the most out of this. I thank you guys for watching, and I want you to, oh, no wonder. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe you were asking about last Friday. Okay. So um, I will, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back, go into the Google's, Google uh, Live, Google Hangout. So many words. All right. The Google Hangout. And I thank you guys for watching. Have a great evening and be safe if you can't make the uh, Google chat. Google Hangout. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.